Hi, Gen Chem 2 students. So I wanted to do a problem all the way through for, um, it's a method of initial rates problem, but Alex calls them deducing a rate law from initial reaction rate data. So like I said in class, this is definitely one of the main concepts you need to get from chapter 14. There will definitely be problems like this on the exams as well as on your final exam. Um, plus we're doing the kinetics experiment and the calculations for that are this type of problem. Okay, so um, we did part of this in class. I'm gonna recreate it again in case you didn't take notes. But this is just one problem and doing just one problem or watching me do one problem is not going to teach you this material. I assure you, you need to go and get all of the background information from reading the text and taking good notes, from watching my videos that are linked in Brightspace and taking good notes, and from actually engaging in these problems, um, trying to understand what you're learning, okay? So... If you haven't been doing that, that's why this is such a struggle. Um, it's going to be a struggle even if you are doing that, but it's much harder if you're not giving yourself the time to learn the background content. So don't think that just watching this video is going to teach you everything you need to know. It won't. Okay, so I'm going to recreate some of what we did in class today. We chose to do reaction one, a uh, rate one over rate three, and we noticed that that means the H2 is going to cancel because H2 is the same concentration in both reaction one and three. So we'll do K times the concentration of N2 raised to the X times the concentration of H2 raised to the Y. So I'm just defining my variables here. The X's don't want to show up very well. And then I'll plug in some actual numbers. So at this point we have, let's see. We know that rate one is 24.0 molar per second. K is going to cancel, so I don't actually care what it is. N2 is 0 0.159 molar. I'm gonna raise that to the power of X. And then H2 is 1.11, and I'll raise that, that's molar. I'll raise that to the Y. That's the top of our ratio. Then the bottom is going to be reaction three. So rate three is 0 0.702 molar per second. It's going to equal, well, the equal sign applies to both, but anyway, it's going to equal K times 0 0.0272 molar to the x and 1.11 molar to the y. So immediately I noticed that 1.11 molar occurs on the top and the bottom. So that means I can cancel both the exponent and the molarity. I also can cancel k because it's on the top and the bottom again. Okay. So my next step is going to be to take 24 divided by 0 0.702. So on the left side of my equation, I find out 34 point, it says 34.188034, and then there's a bunch more digits. I really only care about three of them because I have three sig figs from those rates. I'll keep one extra. So we're gonna say 34.19. The molar per second also cancels. So that doesn't have a unit anymore. And then on the right-hand side, we have 0 0.159 raised to the X. And the denominator there will be 0 0.0272, also raised to the x. OK, when I have an exponent on the top and the bottom, there is an exponent rule that allows that to become outside of the ratio here, so 272. 
raised to the x. So now the x is outside of that ratio. And 0.159 divided by 0 0.0272 would give us 5.845588. I'm going to, again, round to just four digits there because that's really all I care about. And so now what we end up with, the left-hand side is still 34.19. It's going to be equal to 5.846 raised to the x. I didn't do anything to get rid of x. Now, to deal with the x, remember our discussion about how you, you want to choose log or ln to cancel an exponent. It doesn't matter which one. I'll take ln of both sides. So the ln of that and the ln of that. And when you take the log of an exponent, that exponent becomes a coefficient. Uh, so that would simplify to ln of 34.19 equals x times the ln of 5.84. I'm going to try to erase that for so I can make it look more right. It looks like a weird seven right now. Zoom always does that to me. My fours are weird. Okay. All right. So anyway, it It'll give us 5.846. All right. So ln of 5.846 or LOG, again, it really doesn't matter. Okay, so on the right-hand side, we end up with x times the ln of 5.846 equals 1.76575. Again, I'm going to round. In reality, um, I probably would keep all the digits in my calculator and select that number. So your answers would be different slightly if you did that. I don't have my my graphing calculator at home. Um, so I'm not doing that in this case. On the left-hand side, we end up with ln 34.19, which is 3.5319. Don't be afraid of these numbers because there's a logarithm involved. Just type it into your calculator. It's just a number. ln of a number is another number. Okay. So now we get to take 3.5319 and divide by 1.7658, and this will give us our value. The reason I wasn't too concerned about rounding is because I'm going to round to the nearest whole number anyways. Hopefully it is 0, 1, 2, or 3, because those are the options. And what I get from this, when I type that in my calculator, I get 2... 0. 0.00016. So obviously, x is second order. So what we would say is this reaction is second order with respect to nitrogen. That's what we were solving for with x. Okay. So next, we're going to figure out the same thing, but instead of x, we're going to do y. I'm going to choose to use reaction 1 and 2 this time because reaction one and two would result in canceling out um, the nitrogen. So reaction one is, so rate one equals K, my concentration of N2 would be 0. 0.159 raised to the X. You could also say raised to the one because you already know what that X is worth, but it, it won't matter which way you label that. And then 1.11 raised to the Y. And then we'll do rate two is K 0 0.159 
raised to the x, and then 1.37 to the y. Rate 1 is given to us as 24.0 molar per second, and rate 2 is given to us as 36.6 .6 molar per second. That's the left-hand side of my equation. On the right, I see clearly that the k's are going to cancel. The nitrogen data is going to cancel, and all we will be left with is just the hydrogen stuff. Um, our right hand ends up being 1.11 raised to the y divided by 1.37 raised to the y. All right, and so again, it's just, this isn't the only approach, by the way. Sometimes if I realize that something is going to be a, a fraction of decimal value, I can flip this over and I could do reaction two divided by reaction three if I were consistent on both sides. I don't have to though, either way it would be fine. All right, so 24 divided by 36.6 .6 gives us 0 0.65573. On the left hand side, on the right hand side, 1.11 divided by 1.37 gives us 0.81021. That's all going to be raised to the y. Oops. I keep trying to hit that undo button because I like it better. It's, it's easier. There. And that's raised to the y. So again, to solve this, I'll take the ln of both sides. I don't know why this keeps messing up. Maybe I'm writing too fast. And so ln of 0. There we go. Gives us negative. So it'll be y times negative 0 0.22052. Meanwhile, on the left hand side, we have ln of 0 0.65573, which is negative 0.422. Don't get scared about the negatives because um, they're they're going to cancel out, so it's fine. All right, and so I'll divide both sides by negative 0 0.22052, and we end up solving for, why does it do that? Okay. I'm writing too fast, that's why. Okay. <laughs> anyway, so we're going to do negative 0. 0.4220 divided by negative 22. Whoops. Negative 0. 0.22052. Of course, that answer is 1.91365. And therefore, it's going to be equal to 2. So this reaction is second order for hydrogen and because we found y equals 2. And then why can't I spell sideways? Why is it? There we go. And then we also found for nitrogen that x equals 2. So we're pretty close. We can fill in this first answer for that first answer right there 
what I would want to type in is that the rate would equal, uh, they already typed K for you. So that's there. This part is already there. I would add in the part that I'm going to do in blue here. So the rate equals brackets to show we mean concentration uh, and then the chemical that's in inside that we were considering. So N2 is what I've been writing first and we figured out it was second order and then brackets to represent molarity again. It's going to be H2. That's going to be squared also. So that means this reaction is second order for both nitrogen and second order for hydrogen. So altogether, four different molecules have to come together for this reaction to happen. Okay. Now to find the K, what I will do is just choose any one of these reactions and plug in all the info that I have and solve for K. So if I take reaction one, I know the rate. I don't know K yet. I know the concentration of N2. I know that N2 is second order. And I know the concentration of H2, and it's also second order. So everything in here except for the K, I know. I'm going to get rid of the exponents first. So that'll leave the same thing on the side over here. Oh my gosh, that's so annoying. Point one five nine squared gives us twenty five point two eight one, and then one point one one squared. is 1.2321. So on the right-hand side, the unit there, um, we probably do need to write that. So we'll have m squared on the first one and m squared on the second one which means this unit overall is going to end up being m to the 4, okay, on the right-hand side so far. All right, so then we end up with 24 molar per second equals k. It's not making me happy how it keeps writing those k's. Try it again. Okay, k times... 31.15 molar to the four. Okay, so of course I'm gonna take the 24 moles, molar per second, divide that by 31.15, that's a five. And in this case, we have molar to the fourth power, and that's going to equal K. The math is pretty straightforward, I think, but I think the units can be pretty confusing to people. Um, that's why we have to keep track at every step. The answer I get here, 0 0.77046. It says to, to round to two sig figs, so I'm going to leave it at 0.77 because it was 0.770. The units, all right, so I have I have it written this way at the moment, but remember if I have a denominator that's present in the numerator, okay, so in other words, a denominator on the top right here, um, that's equivalent to having it in the denominator because it's a compound fraction, I think is what they call that. So if I have molar, um, left on the top, seconds on the bottom, and molar to the fourth on the bottom. That's currently what the unit is. So then I want to look for where I can cancel. Um, it looks to me like, let's see, I have a molar on top, so this would become a three. So in the end, my unit is seconds on the bottom, molar cubed on the bottom. 
the way I would write that most of the time will be molar minus three and second minus three. So that's the answer that will go in here. Your units depend on what order you find for your reactants. So don't assume it's always going to be M minus three, S minus one. It won't be. Okay. It depends on the specific orders you find. Okay. I hope this was helpful. Um, but as always, if you have questions, shoot me an email and I'll do the best I can to help you. Good luck.